Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a new detection of a very unusual phenomenon that really shocked the scientists when they discovered it. This was an extremely bright flash, a flash much brighter than anything we've seen so far, at least when it comes to short gamma ray bursts, and also extremely bright infrared flashes. And although it was most likely a very powerful collision between two neutron stars, the flash itself still didn't really make sense at least until thorough investigations that may have finally discovered what happened here. So let's discuss this particular event and what most likely caused it. First of all, the scientists are almost certainly convinced that this was most likely a collision between two neutron stars. It's just the end product was something completely different. Now normally when we see an extremely extremely bright gamma ray flash like you'll see right here in a few seconds, and a flash that usually lasts anywhere from 1 to 2 seconds, it means that two neutron stars collided somewhere creating an extremely bright gamma ray flash. These events are extremely powerful producing more energy than our sun will produce in its whole lifetime, and in those 2 seconds they release so much of this energy all at once that we can see it from anywhere in the universe. And for the most part they seem to be exclusively produced when two neutron stars combine creating a black hole, releasing all of this energy as a kind of a point source that essentially lasts for roughly around 2 seconds. And all of the models so far suggest that when these two neutron stars collide, their total mass will generate some sort of a relatively small black hole. Although we know that some gamma ray bursts can also be produced by for example very very powerful supernova when certain types of stars collapse, which by the way also usually results in the production of a relatively massive black hole. And this is what usually happens in these situations, which was all actually confirmed a few years ago when the scientists were able to detect very powerful gravitational waves coming from a certain direction while at the same time also detecting the gamma ray flash as well. And this was basically the first time we ever confirmed that these events are definitely caused by neutron stars. However, something else happened this time. When the scientists were studying this particular event, they realized that something didn't add up. The total brightness of this particular flash was about 10 times brighter than the one we observed in 2017. And this meant that, well, maybe we're just looking at something much closer to us, because naturally, by being closer to something, it will appear much brighter. And so the scientists performed additional investigations using Hubble telescope in order to make sure that whatever they're observing is at the right distance and the brightness observed was also correct. And turns out that instead of being closer, it was actually much farther than they initially anticipated. The distance here corresponded to redshift of about 0.55, which means that it came from a distance of roughly around 6 billion light years away from planet Earth, with the total brightness being about 10 times brighter than the previous event from 2017. And the event itself happened approximately 3000 light years away from the center of a relatively small but somewhat young and somewhat active galaxy that's currently producing quite a lot of stars. It's not the most active galaxy, but it's definitely more active than for example the Milky Way. Although obviously similar neutron star collisions were detected in other galaxies before as well. And pretty much right away the event with this name right here became a bit of a sensation because it essentially presented us with something extremely powerful happening in that part of the universe around 6 billion light years away from us. And that something was most likely once again a collision between two neutron stars that ended up producing not a black hole, but very likely a magnetar. And when the magnetar was produced, because it's an extremely powerful neutron star by itself, it actually magnified the explosion that was created by somehow depositing a lot of extra energy that the magnetar possessed itself into all of this ejected material from the kilonova that made it glow much brighter than usual. Now, if the magnetar was indeed produced in this event, and if this is what caused all of this to have such an extremely bright luminosity, the scientists in this paper believe that in approximately a few months after the event, within at least one year, certain types of radio emissions will be visible coming from this direction that will definitely be a telltale sign that this is a magnetar and nothing else. If, however, these signs are not seen, it's a lot more likely that some other explanation needs to be created here, such as maybe these emissions happened under a certain angle, in this paper they suggest an angle of about 14 degrees, which caused certain uh, frequencies to be much brighter than other frequencies, and in this case infrared frequencies being extremely bright. Although this still doesn't explain the total brightness of this event, it's still much brighter than other similar events. Now normally we expect these kilonova to be about a thousand or so times brighter than a typical supernova, which already are quite bright. 
but in this particular case it seems to have been about 10,000 times brighter, which really makes this a completely new record holder for the brightest and the most powerful flash event that we've observed so far. Although at the moment a lot of things still don't really add up and a lot of things still kind of don't make sense. So the scientists in this paper believe that this is a completely new phenomenon we've actually never seen before. Now first of all, one thing that doesn't really add up is the idea of discovering a new magnetar to begin with. We know that magnetars even today are extremely rare. The current database right here only lists 30 of them found so far. And essentially that means that they are extremely, extremely rare objects. So finding one more just like that it would actually be kind of unlikely. We also know that neutron star collisions are also extremely rare, so discovering a neutron star collision that produced the magnetar makes this a super ultra rare event. Which scientifically and in some sense statistically doesn't really make sense right now. We do not expect to find these events in our own lifetime. So either these events are way more common than we initially thought, or we just got extremely super lucky. So we don't really know what exactly happened here and how frequently this happens, but it does seem to be an extremely, extremely interesting event and a phenomenon that a lot of scientists will be investigating for many years to come. And studying neutron star collisions is actually really important for us, mostly because we believe today that this is where a lot of heavy elements came from. Things like, for example, uranium, things like thorium, things like, well, actually all of these elements you see in violet, all of them came from neutron star collisions, including all of the precious metals we have like gold and platinum, and many different other elements including rare earth metals that we usually use for, for example, producing cell phones. So all of these different elements that our society and our civilization depends on were all created in this extremely rare event that we're trying to learn more about and trying to understand what exactly happens there and how frequently it occurs. And because this seems to be the first time ever we've ever seen magnetar being produced, it also makes this an extremely important discovery. And although we might have discovered another magnetar inside the famous SN 1987 supernova that essentially was observed by many different scientists back in 1987, we don't really know if it's truly there just yet. And also we don't really know if it's a magnetar or some other neutron star that might actually resemble a magnetar. Nevertheless, discovering these unusual objects and also discovering how they're made is extremely important for us because they do seem to represent some of the most extremes possible in the universe. The most highly pressurized matter that you can actually find anywhere with some of the most unusual quantum effects on the inside. But I guess the other question here is, did this event produce gravitational waves that were observed here on planet Earth? Like the previous event that was detected back in 2017 that was naturally detected on planet Earth when the two neutron stars merged producing these powerful effects. Well, for this event, it seems that it was just a little bit too far. It was about 6 billion light years away. The scientists in this paper believe that similar events could only really produce detectable gravitational waves that could be detected from Earth only if it was at a distance of maybe about 600 to 800 million light years away from us. So it just has to be much closer to us in order for us to detect these events in the future. But for now we just need a lot more follow-ups and they're definitely coming. For the next few years the scientists are going to try to observe this location in radio waves for example, trying to establish what else has been produced in the process and will try to discover if they can also find emissions from different elements, like for example gold and platinum. And for all we know, because it's a magnetar and because we know magnetars can produce FRBs or fast radio bursts, we might also be able to somehow detect an FRB coming from this location, proving once and for all that this is exactly how all of these mysterious signals are produced. Nevertheless, I guess we're back to having neutron star collisions as one of the more exciting and more difficult to explain events, something that a lot of scientists were talking about approximately three years ago. It looks like neutron stars have just created another mystery. But because this is a recent discovery, that's unfortunately all we know about this so far. There's going to be a lot more to talk about in the future, so make sure to subscribe and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Also, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before and potentially support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.